The Sega Master System is an 8-bit games console which is viewed very differently depending on what part of the world you are from. Within the Japanese and American game markets for example, the system is no more than a mere footnote and when the system launched in these two major territories it was unable to even make a dent in the well-established armour of the NES in those regions. However, in other huge markets like South America and my home of Europe for example, the Sega Master System was the most popular games console of that era. In all those regions, in the console arena anyway, it is very clear why in some areas Nintendo dominated and in others it was Sega. Basically Nintendo launched first in North America and Japan and Sega launched first in Europe and South America. It was as simple as that. Nothing to do with the system's power or the game's quality like some people would have you believe. Back then it was all down to who threw the punches first. Whilst the Sega Master System may have been the most popular games console of the late 80s in my country of the United Kingdom, it certainly wasn't the most popular gaming platform. It was a far cry away from that. Games consoles were seen as a bit low brow here at the time, and so most of us had moved on to microcomputers here instead. They were far more sophisticated than the old Atari VCSs what people had. I had an Amstrad for example, and a large chunk of the country owned the mighty ZX Spectrum. I talked about this period of history in two videos I made in the last couple of weeks. One of them was about is the ZX Spectrum worth playing today, and the other was why Nintendo failed in Europe. So, check those out if you want to learn more about that period. Anyway, enough about that. Now I've told you a bit about the Master System's popularity in various regions, let's look at the console's development history. The Master System is a games console manufactured by Sega in Japan back in 1985. Unbeknownst to many Westerners, this was not the first ever Sega console. It was just the first Sega console to see a release in Europe and North America. Due to this, the Master System was known as the Sega Mark III in Japan. The first Sega games console was actually the Sega SG-1000, released way back in 1983. But of course, that is a story for a whole nother time. Anyway, the third Sega system, aka the Mark III, was completely redesigned and launched elsewhere as the Sega Master System. The Master System was released in 1986 in North America, 1987 in Europe, 1989 in Brazil, and in 1987 the redesigned version was also released in Japan for some reason as well. This version of the Mark III could play both cartridges and credit card sized Sega cards, which were more budget games which were available at a lower cost. The system was later revised again and released as the Master System 2, however this time the card slot was taken away. It is the Master System 2 which I believe sold fairly well in the UK. This is the model I remember seeing in other children's bedrooms as a child, and this was the model I saw boot sales swapped with in the early 2000s. I had bloody Master System 2s coming out of my ears at one point, where I used to get forced to buy them as part of bundles to get the games back in the day. The Master System was released purely to be a direct competitor to the Nintendo Entertainment System in the third generation of video game consoles. The Master System was constructive with hardware which was far superior to that of the NES, but failed to overturn Nintendo's significant market share advantage in Japan and North America. As I reiterated before though, it seemed like in this period marketing wise it was all about who shot bullets first in order to win each regional war. However, its failings in North America and Japan were easily made up by its victories in Europe and Brazil. Some speculate that due to the fact that the Master System is an all round better built console than that of the NES, that it could have potentially overturned Nintendo in North America and Japan. This however was never really a realistic possibility at the time due to Nintendo's evil licensing practices that locked in third party developers from creating games for any systems other than the NES. Despite all of this though, this never stopped Sega creating a number of well received titles for the system, particularly in the PAL regions. There are only 341 games for this one, but there are some fantastic gems amongst those.
An interesting and slightly hilarious factoid as well is that the Master System is actually the longest reigning games console that is still in the console wars. The console is still hugely popular in Brazil and is still being manufactured there to this very day. This happened though due to two not so hilarious reasons. Firstly, the obvious one being poverty and many individuals not being able to afford anything more than an 8-bit console. And secondly, ridiculous import taxes, meaning that it costs an insane amount of money to import anything manufactured elsewhere and outside of Brazil. Thankfully though, for the wealthier Brazilians, they now manufacture Xbox Ones in the country for the new generation of gamers. However, many are stuck with Mega Drives and Master Systems. Personally though, if I was a Brazilian, I'd stick with the Master System anyway over an Xbox One. Yuck. Now, let's take a look at the system's controls. Looking at the thing, it is extremely clear where they took their influence for its design. It is identical in size and shape to that of an NES controller and features a similar button layout. One thing though that you will notice is that it is missing the pause and select buttons for some bizarre reason. Instead, the pause button is located on the console itself, which is a bit of a throwback in design to that of the Atari VCS. It is a tad annoying not being able to use the controller to pause the game. So now I've told you about the system's impact around the world, and even a little bit about the great controller, let's look at some of my favourite games on this fantastic system. We shall start by taking a look at Alex Kidd in Miracle World. This is a game that came preloaded on many of the Master System 2 units, so you didn't even need a cartridge to play this one. Due to this happening, it also makes the cartridge version of this game amongst the rarest on the system. This game was hugely popular, and I remember Alex being talked about more in my school playground than Super Mario ever was. Something odd though is that I never once remember anyone ever referring to him as Alex Kidd. It was always Alex the Kid. Which reminds me of AVGN's alternative universe theory regarding the Berenstain Bears. I was one of the people from the Alex the Kid universe. Which one were you from? Anyway, Alex Kid in Miracle World is a side-scrolling platform game first released in 1986. The player must finish levels and overcome obstacles and puzzles in a 2D side-scrolling environment. Throughout the 17 stages, Alex Kidd faces many monsters and the three henchmen of Jankin the Great, before facing Jankin himself. Alex Kidd is the only playable character in the game and his primary skill is punching, which he can use to attack enemies, break certain types of rocks to access new areas, and collect money. Yeah! There are also a number of great Sonic games on the Master System, which are completely different games to that of the Mega Drive. Arguably the best of these releases was Sonic Chaos, which came out in 1993. This game is notable for being the first Master System game that allowed Taos as a playable character as well. This was also the first 8-bit game Sonic could perform the Spin Dash. Also, whilst playing as Sonic, players can collect rocket boots, which allow him to fly through the air for a short time. He is also able to enter various special stages. I really do not feel there is much left to be said about the Sonic games on the Mega Drive. However, if you enjoyed them, then you will definitely like Sonic Chaos on the Master System as well. It is essentially everything you would expect from Sonic in his Golden Age period. So, if Sonic and Alex the Kid are good alternatives to Mario, then Golden Axe Warrior is your go-to alternative to The Legend of Zelda. Surprisingly, Golden Axe on the Master System is a fantastic Zelda clone, rather than an arcade-style beat-em-up like the Golden Axe game on the Mega Drive. Players take control of the game's hero, who can be named at the start of a new quest. The game features a large overworld with over 200 unique screens and many enemies. Players must retrieve each of the game's nine crystals by locating hidden labyrinths. Each labyrinth is guarded by monsters and full of puzzles that must be solved in order to reach the boss and retrieve the crystal. 
throughout the game, players collect various items and abilities that allow access to previously unreachable areas. The 10th Labyrinth is only accessible after collecting the 9 crystals and players must then find the Golden Axe and use it to defeat Death Adder. The game is considered one of the system's best yet rarest games to find. There is absolutely no hiding from the fact that this is a blatant Zelda ripoff, but if you're going to rip someone off, then at least do it in style. And that is exactly what Sega did with this one. The Ninja is a fantastically fun run and gun game, such as Commando and Ikari Warriors. The player has to shoot enemies and defeat a boss at the end of each stage. Enemies include the likes of Samurais, Ninjas and Bloody Dogs. The player's normal weapons are an unlimited supply of throwing knives, but power-ups to throwing stars are also available in addition to this. While most of the stages are vertically scrolling, a few of the levels add some variety, including a level where the player must scale a wall. As fun as this game is, it is bloody ridiculously difficult. You will find yourself dying regularly and ready to throw your controller through the bloody screen. But then again, ridiculously difficult, rage-inducing games is what retro gaming is all about, eh? So, whilst we have seen Sega's answer to Mario and Zelda, Let's look at their answer to Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. Fantasy Star. Fantasy Star's first instalment of the series was released for the Sega Master System in 1987. Fantasy Star was one of the pioneers of the traditional console RPG format, featuring fully traversable overworld maps complete with interactive towns and sprawling dungeons. The player engages in random enemy encounters both on the overworld map and in the dungeons, which saw a change from the top-down perspective to a first-person view. The game introduced players to the planets, races and lore of the series. The game follows the adventures of Alice Landau, a young woman from Parma who is notably one of the genre's first ever female protagonists. Alice embarks upon a quest for revenge after the benevolent King Laxic kills Alice's brother, Nero. Wait one second! Brother Nero? Brother Nero? I knew you'd come. I suppose the king must have wanted him deleted! The game has been critically acclaimed since its release. It is praised for featuring both space travel and multi-level three-dimensional dungeons. Many describe the game as a new breed of adventure game that could set the standard for future RPG titles, which arguably it went on to do. So, that was five out of the many great games amongst the Sega Master Systems library. I'll probably give some more of these games more in-depth reviews on this channel down the line, and I'll definitely cover more games for the platform over this coming year. The top games on the system are every bit as fun and enjoyable as the top games on the NES, and if you're a big fan of 8-bit gaming, then the Master System is a must-own console for any collection. As I said, I never grew up with either a Master System or an NES. I was a microcomputer lad, so I don't have a vast amount of nostalgia for either of these platforms. But to answer the question of the title of this video, is the Master System worth playing today? Well, after everything I've showed you in this video, the answer to that question is a resounding yes. I am sure most of Brazil will agree with me too! <laughs> yeah! Cheerio! Hello everyone! If you liked learning more about the Master System, then I'm sure you'll be equally interested in learning more about the ZX Spectrum, a platform that defeated the Master System in my region. Relating to this same story, I have also made a video on why the NES failed in Britain. I'd say they're both worth checking out if you'd like more of a nice global perspective of gaming around the world in the late 80s. Click the annotations preceding this video to watch one of those. Shoutouts to Jarrett Tolzian, Mad Date Productions, Andreas Larson, Peter Sedorn, Diego Pereira and all of my other patrons. Thank you all for your support, yeah! If you want to be added to this prestigious list, then check out my Patreon page. Ta-ta and farewell.